Amen. What a song. And by the way, let me just mention a couple of things. Dave Duncan did go home to be with the Lord last Sunday, and the service will be this Tuesday, November 26th, down here in Franklin at Swartz Funeral Home. Visitation will be from 9.30 to 12.30, and the service will start then at 12.30. That's this coming Tuesday. And then, of course, Bob Wilson uh, went home to be at the Lord last Monday. His arrangements are at Family Funeral Care on Rockville Road. Visitation is today from 2 to 6 p.m. and tomorrow from noon to 1 with the funeral at 1 o'clock. So that's some information. If you want to know it a little bit more, just call the office and talk to Donna or Connie, and they'll let you know all those things. This coming Thursday is Thanksgiving. Amen? And uh, how many are ready for the turkey again, huh? We had turkey Friday night, and it was wonderful. I mean, Lonnie uh, excelled his own self. He, he did a great job, didn't he? And uh, it was a blessing, all the volunteers, all the people that helped, and uh, so many. I mean, there are a lot of guys out here cooking uh, in the parking lot uh, during the uh, day on, thir- on uh, Friday, and we just had so many people that were pitching in and everything. Then the skits were crazy, weren't they? <laughs> I like Santa Claus. I like Elvis came in. He made a great appearance, didn't he? I wonder why. I wonder why he didn't wear that outfit, that suit he wore the other night. And uh, it was something else. And the kids, it was uh, uh, younger people uh, that did most of it. I was waiting. Uh, I mean, it was an honor. Apostle Paul was here. I mean, he was here, and he spoke. Uh, I said he was a good preacher. He chased rabbits that night, and it was really good. And uh, so, I mean, it, it was a good night, and then I was just hoping that Rachel would collapse with Addie on her, on her back. And, uh, but it was a good night, just good, clean fun, had a good time. And uh, thank you for all you people who did work so hard to make it possible. And then afterward, the cleanup and all the people that chipped in to take the tables out and sweep the floors and put the chairs in and so on. And uh, we want to thank you from the bottom of our heart. And by the way, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned that Kara and I, we'd been on the cleaning committee uh, for all the time we'd been here, 15 years. And uh, we enjoyed every Saturday morning, we'd come in and we'd have our team with us. And the other day, I was mentioning Carol May, and I forgot to mention my team. And I've had great teams over the years who have helped clean, meet here uh, every Saturday morning and do our thing. And then we'd go down flapjacks or steak and shake or something like that and have breakfast. <clears throat> and it was just a great time. I mean, it really was. And so I want to thank my team that's kind of taken over now uh, for me and Carol to give us uh, some time. And uh, we stay in bed now a little bit. And uh, I said, I wonder what the cleaning crew are doing. Well, I really don't care, but I just, uh, (laughs) I'm kidding. No, I can trust them, and they do a wonderful job, and all the family. So thank you from the bottom of my heart to you all. A lot of people just walk in, say church, walk out. They don't understand all the goings on from uh, the time for for the doors to open on Sunday and then throughout the week and everything, the events that go on, what has to take place, and there's just a lot there. This, (coughs) excuse me, this Thursday is Thanksgiving, and I thought it might be good just to open it up for a few moments and uh, what what you want to thank God for. Uh, uh, let's make it on God. We want to thank God for, you know. And so uh, I'm just going to open up some popcorn testimonies maybe. And don't be shy. Just stand up and say something real, but say it loud enough so we can hear. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Stop crying. Amen. I have a lot of kids. Why don't you take my kids and do some things (laughs) with them, would you? Well, thank God for our kids. Amen? Amen. 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 Okay, somebody else. Yes, Linda? In the last couple weeks, we've had two surgeries. Bob had his 
eye surgery on his eye and it's doing real well. And our grandson had those rods taken out of his chest, which have been in there for four years. He's yeah. 18 years old now. And he's doing as good as can be expected. Amen. And they both came to the older you get, it's interesting, and even young, you have these surgeries, don't you? And everything going on. Somebody else, just great. Steve? Hey, I thank the Lord for just being with me, for just taking care of me, for just being God. And most of all, for saving me. And uh, been through a little bit, but he is good. God is good all the time. Amen. Amen. He told me to tell you, you're a burden. <laughs> 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 I'm sure she does. Okay, somebody else. Just anybody. Yes, Linda. Yeah, I just wanted to thank Jesus for my husband and my family. And I wanted to thank him for John's had two good surgeries already. January 22nd, he had a shoulder replaced. And October 1st, he had a hip replaced. And now December 20th, he's going to have his toe work done. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We're a handicapped group of people, aren't we? Huh? <laughs> Rachel, yes, ma'am. I just want, I've been thinking about this the last couple of weeks, just how grateful I am that I've grown up in a family that loves the Lord. All of my children are faithful, they serve. Um, and then thinking about how you have been my pastor for 27 years. I'm sorry. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes, Bev. I'm thankful for the Word. Amen. The Word of God that has the, what we need every day Amen. in our lives. And I thank you for being faithful to the Word Amen. and always giving us the Word. That's, a, that's something we take for granted here, but it's not true in every well, church. Thank you, Bev. So, God bless you. Thank you. Yes, Peggy. Just a popcorn, not a lecture. <laughs> For our ladies' Bible study. And throughout this study, I realized that I've been a Christian since I was 12 years old. I have a new feeling in my heart. I thought about things that I've never thought about before, way back to creation. And God has so blessed us. I've been through deaths. I've had 37 family members who died. God has been there. Please don't let your salvation get to be a thing that you take for granted. Amen. Amen. God does marvelous things every day. Amen. 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 Okay, somebody else? Kenny? <laughs> yeah, I, I just want to thank God for my salvation and what he did for me. I thank him for my wife. Thank you, Kenny. Amen. 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 Somebody else? Yes, John. I just like to thank the Lord for the undeserved forgiveness and the blessings I have, the wonderful family that I have, and for pointing out Grace Point Church to us. Yeah. Amen. We're glad you got here. We've been waiting on you. Where you been? <laughs> Amen. Yes. Amen. You want Christmas gifts, don't you? Huh? It doesn't work. <laughs> okay, I'm going to close off unless somebody just wants to jump up. Uh, right, uh, yes, Justin. Yeah, I look a little bit like Rachel. I'm so thankful for the people here. Yeah. Um, 
I look back over the years, I I listened to that song we sang, and it's it's not because I've been faithful. It's not because I've been good. You know, it's it's all because he he, he loved me because that's how good he is. And it's the people Amen. here are very much like that. You know, they've loved me through so much, they've they're they're there to pick you up when you fall. They're there to, you know, be your strength when you need it. Um, and when you don't want it, they're still praying for you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I, I, I'm just so thankful for the people, the people here. You know, I mean, we could look around, we could point. We may not like this or that or this, but when you have such people that love each other, that love the Lord, that love and pray, and then uh, support you as you have taught us to rightly fight, you know, that's changed everything. So, yeah. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Okay, Don, did I see your hand? Yeah. Yes, sir. Speak up loud, sir. All right. Hey, uh, I am so thankful that God gives us another day on this earth. Our health, especially, Lord. And, uh, you know, we're not, given, we're not promised another day. And you live every day to support us. And I, I just uh, want to dwell on that, what you said about the word. That word is everything. Amen. 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 Love you, Don. Okay, title of my message is Wherefore. That's my message. Amen. It's going to be a simple one, but a truthful one, I believe. And uh, the word wherefore, it means because or it's the reason why we do certain things. God does something, then he says, wherefore, then we are to do. And so that's the title of my message is, wherefore. There are a lot of reasons why, as believers, we don't mature in our faith. Some of the examples, uh, excuses that we use sometimes, other things are more important than God to us. Uh, we get wrapped up and other things become our priority, our first love, don't they? Another reason we don't grow is because our flesh, our eyes, and our pride control us. Uh, that's a real problem. That's a battle every day for every believer. Our old lost friends pull us down. Uh, if you keep hanging with people who don't live for God, sooner or later you're going to start not living for God in certain areas of your life. I had to make that decision uh, when I was a young believer, and I'm grateful I finally did, and it just turned my life around, actually, uh, that I could be free to be what God wanted me to be. And then also standing for Christ, cost, it puts a lot of pressure on you when it's time to stand up and say and give a word for him, and not be ashamed of the gospel, and uh, that's a lot of pressure on people. And uh, so people, they just don't do it, so they don't grow. And then also, the word is, they say, is hard to understand. That's why we have to study. Uh, prayer, all these things are difficult. And they are at times, to be consistent. You have to force yourself, even when you don't feel like it, right? Uh, you have to say, I got to do this, because I know what happens if I don't. And then... Some people say, well, I can't be involved too much because I'm already so involved with other things. I'm, I'm occupied. Uh, I'm scheduled out. <laughs> I don't have any time for the things of God. And you can give these reasons one after another and some other excuses, of course, but these things equal little growth and maturity in the believer's life. You won't have much maturity when you use these excuses for not trying to grow. But we're grateful there are some believers that we are grateful for who take their maturity seriously. And what's the reason for that? Why do they do that? Well, I think the answer is really simple. God has gripped their heart. God has said to them one time or more in their life, wherefore, because I've done this, wherefore you do this. Amen? 
And uh, so it states here, for the love of Christ constraineth us. And let me just stop there for a second. Uh, I hope his love has gripped your heart. Uh, it's hard to turn your back on the love of Christ. And there's something about it that just takes control of you. And I'm grateful for that. Let's show that verse again, if you would, guys. Verse 14. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge, we determine, uh, we discern, that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, now get this, but unto him which died for them and rose again. And then he says in verse 16, the first word, what? Wherefore. Because of what Christ has done, the reason we do what we do now is the fact that Christ died for us, now we are to live for him. Amen? Wherefore. He died for us, he's buried, rose again, accomplished so much, wherefore we are to live for him. Another example would be in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 and following. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, now just leave that verse up there for a second, guys, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. God became flesh in the person of Jesus Christ. And the reason it was not robbery because it's not robbery if it belongs to you. Amen. And godness and divineness belong to Jesus Christ. Okay. Verse 7 then says this. But made himself of no reputation. He didn't come with all the horns blowing and all of that. And took up on him the form of a servant. And was made, now just leave that verse up there again, I'm seeing things. And was made in the likeness of men. One day God came down here in human flesh. And let me just say for the record that he did not lay aside his divinity. He did not lay aside his godness. Okay, he's always God. Always has been, always will be. So when he came in the person of Christ, the Father made a body outside of humanity and God inhabited that body and that seed that came down to this world so that it could be sinless. But he always remained God. He did not empty himself of his deity. Okay? Then verse 8 says this, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. There, he's saying Christ humiliated himself. An open public shame died, shed his blood on an old rugged cross for your sins and for my sins. And then notice the next verse so the Father then, in verse 9, what's the word? Wherefore, because of what Christ did, wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him, Christ, a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven of things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Because of Christ humbling himself is the reason the Father honors his Son. And the amazing thing about that was that was all planned before the world began. <laughs> that's the thing that's hard for me to grasp a hold of sometimes. So here we have the son dying, rising, the father honoring him. And then God says to us in verse 12, what does he say? Wherefore, because of Christ's work, because of the father honoring his only begotten son, he says to us, wherefore, now go on back, I need to read it, okay? 
You're going a little fast for me. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Now get this. Work out your own salvation with fear, reverence, and trembling. Take it seriously. The reason now is we are to honor Christ as the Father did by our life, our behavior, our conduct, our growing, our maturing. We are to work out our own salvation. We ourselves have the responsibility, responsibility to live a godly and disciplined life for God. This is not work for your salvation, but to work from out the free gift of salvation that we have already when we receive by faith Jesus Christ and his death, burial, and resurrection. We are to bring our salvation that we have to its fullest completion. Now that makes sense, doesn't it? The salvation that we have, bring it to its fullest. Do your very, very best. We are to mature, be responsible for our own discipline of our own behavior, our lifestyle. And that includes God's word, prayer, Christ, and involvement. And that's something good for all. You can't mature without Christ, without his word, without prayer, and without involvement. Because when you apply the truth to your life, it becomes real more to you in your life, doesn't it? Let's say you receive a free, you receive free a gold mine. You've been given its title deed as a gift. And when you receive that, it's legally yours now. However, you get no gold from it until you work it, labor in it, make an effort in order to produce the gold. Likewise, we don't mature until we work at it, we labor at it, we make an effort toward it. That's the only time we can grow. Now, you do that with other things in your life. Why don't you do that with God, the one who's done so much for you? Why is it that we have to always, as Paul says, we beseech you, brethren, we plead with you, we beg you? Why does God have to beg us to do what is right? Amen? Amen. A little cool, God. Just a little bit there. Growth and maturity is to bring our practice, our behavior, our lifestyle, our actions up to our position, our identity, who we truly are in Christ. That's maturing. Ephesians 4.1 says this here. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. Bring up your practice to your position in Christ. And when you're doing that, that's when you're growing. And when you're growing, that's when you're maturing. Does that make sense? Growth and maturity only happens when we work at it. That would work. Ephesians 2.10, you know it well. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus, salvation, Unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. This is God's will for our life. We were saved not to continue sinning. We were saved not just to do what we want to do. We were saved unto good works, good things that God describes to us in his word. God wants us to fulfill that. Titus chapter 2 verse 11 for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. And that grace teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, 
we should live, here's the good, soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. And verse 14 says this, who gave himself for us, here's the wherefore, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Now my question this morning is, with many, why there's not the works, why there's not the maturity in people's lives? It's either one of two things. One, we could truly be really backslidden. That's possible. We live in human flesh, and it's possible for us to step back at times, amen? Sometimes we falter, we understand that. Peter faltered, Samson faltered, David faltered. A lot of people have faltered, but thank God for grace that gives to get us back up. Jerry Bridges said this, We Christians may be very disciplined and industrious in our business, our studies, our home, or even our ministry. But we tend to be lazy when it comes to exercise in our own spiritual eyes. And that's what we do too often. We are, he says, we have our own personal responsibility to train ourselves to be godly. God says, listen, I want you to be godly. But we make too many excuses. Jay Adams, as far as I'm concerned, one of the great counselors of all time, he said, you may have sought and tried to obtain instant godliness. He says, there is no such thing. We want somebody to give us three easy steps to godliness. And we'll take them next Friday and be godly. The trouble is, godliness... Godliness doesn't come that way, and it doesn't. It takes work, it takes labor, it takes effort. The other reason people don't grow, mature, is they truly never been saved. There's no fruit in their life. Now, I think too often we don't focus enough on this. And I believe the reason is that because We are so strong, we believe salvation is by grace, and it is. And we never want to mix nor to add works. So we disassociate with works. However, let me just say this, when we put our faith in Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, it's then a believer receives total pardon for all their sins, past, present, future. They've been given eternal life. The word life there is the Greek word zoe, which means the love life of God. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. It's then so many things happens to us in our being, our character, All of that is transformed. The direction, the motivation of our lives change. We are, you could say, revolutionized. That we are different, a new person. We're Christ one. This new birth moves inside us to help produce good, godly works in our behavior. That's why the Kandarian man running around in chains and naked and and hurting people, and when he met Christ and was wonderfully saved, there he's in his right mind, fully clothed, and he wants to follow Jesus. How does that happen? He truly got saved. Jesus tells him, go on home and testify to his family. I think of young Timothy, just a young boy, but when he... He became a believer, I believe, on Paul's first missionary journey. And later on, he became one of Paul's fellow companions. He traveled with Paul. He learned from Paul. Then he became the great church problem solver. Paul would send him to the churches that were having problems. How could he do that? Because he got saved. Now think. When we got saved, we that are saved this morning, we were immediately 
reconciled to God. We were made nigh to God. We became one of his family. We're heavenly seated in Christ. We're joint heirs with Christ. We're ha we have a heavenly inheritance in heaven. We have a heavenly citizenship. We were placed into Christ. We're in him and he's in us. We have been justified, a right standing before God. We've been redeemed, purchased out of slavery, set to be free. We were regenerated, made alive, given the Holy Spirit, sealed, adopted, given Christ's righteousness to our account. We've been quickened, never ever any condemnation because of sin toward our lives. I think if all of that's taking place in your life, something ought to spark in your life. Believers have been changed. They're a new person. They have a new position, and there should be a new practice. We are not saved by doing works, but being, but because we are saved, we work. Let me say that again. We are not saved by doing works, but because we are saved, we work. Romans 6, verse 17 and following. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. You don't have to show the next verses, but just show verse 11 for me if you would, guys. First Corinthians. He gives a long list of all those sins that... And he says, such were, that's past. That's no longer going on in your life. But you are washed, you're sanctified, justified in the name of the Lord Jesus. You're somebody who is new now. So let me ask you again. Do you have any works for God's honor in your life? I have a long list because of time I can't give it. I have a long list of testimonies of people Dr. Charles Baker said, if a person claims to be an artist but he never paints, if a person claims to be a mu musician but never plays, we have reason to doubt they're not. If a person claims to be a new creation in Christ for the purpose of producing good works but they never do any good works, you have reason to question and to doubt. But I have some wonderful news as I close out here. We don't have to mature or do works alone by ourselves. Philippians 2.13 says this, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his God's working in you, if you're saved. He says Ephesians 3.20 now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Colossians 1.29, whereunto I also labor striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. God energizes our works through the word of God, the spirit of God. And he works in a powerful way in the disciplined, responsible believer who makes an effort to do it. Understand, we're on God's team, a partnership of, co of cooperation. 1 Thessalonians 5.24 says this, Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. So you're not alone. God's in you. He's working in you to put that together. And the more you yield, the more he works. And the more he works, the more you grow, the more you mature. I hope that that makes sense. I'm not going to use the last verse, guys. 
Frederick Page, he was an early pioneer in aviation. He was flying in the Middle East, and he was going across Arabia. Unknown to him, a rat had gotten on board that airplane. It was not a luxury like we have. It's one of the early planes. And he heard that sound of gnawing. When he heard that sound, he knew it was a rodent. His heart began to pound. He said, what if that rat would gnaw the cables to our control? We would go down and crash. He said, what in the world do I do? And so he finally remembered that when he was at school, he learned that the higher you go, rats can't breathe. So he began to climb and climb until finally he didn't hear that gnawing anymore. When he landed, he found that rat right behind the cockpit, right where he shouldn't be. <laughs> and let me just say to you, there are a lot of believers that have rats in their lives, preventing them from growth, from maturity, wanting you and me to crash. So what do we do? We climb higher and higher in our spiritual life and relationship with Jesus Christ. And then the flesh, the devil, and the world will suffocate and can't breathe in our life. Amen? Now, this coming Thursday is Thanksgiving. We have so much to be thankful for. We heard some of the testimonies. These are just some of the blessings. All of us could get up and say, this past year, God has blessed us in this area, this area, blessings. And so I say to you as a congregation, because of all the blessings of God on your life and in your life, wherefore? Wherefore, you are to become a stronger, more maturing child of God in your faith. That's what God wants from us. Father, we love you. Thank you that you said wherefore. Because of our salvation, because of what Christ has done for us, because of you even glorifying him, and God in our life, you want what's best for us. God, forgive us for all the fighting and complaining and crying that we do because you're trying to work in our life. Forgive us for being lukewarm, anemic believers too much of the time. God, may we be strong, courageous Christians. May we get in your word, read it, study it, apply it to our life. May we get a hold of you in our prayer life. May we do something for you in our life, a testimony, something, some work that you have for us to do. May we be faithful this coming year. Thank you for all the people. We love them. Just may they have a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving. In Jesus' name. And everybody said? We hope you received a blessing from today's service. We would love to have you visit with us in person. For more information, please visit our website at gpindy.net or contact us by phone at 317-535-3512. For more options to watch, just click On Demand on the website. Until next broadcast, may God bless you is our prayer.